Where do you watch TV? On Watch TV. Nowhere. On Watch TV. What's on Watch TV? On Watch TV is one of the most exciting channels on Roku and Amazon Fire TV with lots of categories to choose from, from movies to music, documentaries, and more. There's something for everyone. What if people want to place their content on Watch TV? You can visit the website onwatchtv.net to find out more or email onwatchtv at gmail.com. Don't forget, check out On Watch TV. See you on Watch TV. See you on Watch TV. On Watch TV is available now on Roku and Amazon Fire TV. Check it out. On Watch TV. This week would have marked Dr. King's 93rd birthday. A birthday that has now become a national holiday. I remember as a young kid marching in the streets and organizing with folks to make that day a reality, listening to songs by Stevie Wonder, who was a champion of this holiday, and, and watching his efforts. It was very inspirational, very motivational for me as a young folk. Young man, how about that? Today we're going to talk about a little bit about Dr. King's legacy, We'll look at some recent turns of events that Dr. King wouldn't approve of, a rise in some gun violence, and then a program to inspire the youth and inspire some of our most vulnerable populations. This is Let's Chew the Gum. Let's talk about it. Welcome to Let's Chew the Gum. I'm your host, Protocol. We talk a lot about a lot of things in this show while we chew the gum. And just like every show, we always have something for your mind, 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 something for your mind, 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 something for your mind, mind, something for your mind. Something for your, for your. Thank you for tuning in today with me. I'm your host, Protocol. As I mentioned in the outset, today would have been, or this week marks the 93rd birthday of Dr. King. There have been celebrations all across the country and around the world to honor his contributions to our society. Um, I know there are many uh, that have been postponed because of the uh, upsurge or the, the recent surge in the uh, COVID variants and whatnot. However, not even a disease and pandemic can stop us from celebrating the contributions of Dr. King and, and what it meant to all of us. So I'm glad you're tuning in today. It's been a minute. I'm so excited. I have to tell you, I'm super excited that right now you are seeing me. This is the I'd, I'd say the, the first time, although I've recorded a, a uh, podcast before with video. This is the first time in a professional studio i've done them in my home studio and that's professional but i'm here and i want to give a shout out to blackview tv and I'm, I'm in their studio and and they're hosting me today so i'm very grateful for that um if you like what you see be sure to reach out to blackview tv you see how i made that rhyme <laughs> now we'll, we'll get right into it um this year just like every year is an important uh time as we celebrate and, and recognize the contributions of Dr. King, um, particularly because there's legislation that is being proposed right now in both houses of Congress related to Voting Rights Act, a topic that was near and dear to Dr. King's heart, a topic that he was instrumental in uh, pushing forward with the Voting Rights Act of 1964. And as many of you may know, um, these voting rights have been in decline for several of our uh, vulnerable populations, subpopulations. Um, right now, that's a hot topic, and so we want to address that. But first, I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you, some of you would be listening and, and viewing this for the first time, why is this show called Let's Chew the Gum? I, I didn't, even, didn't even mention it. I, I got to remember that oftentimes I'm getting new viewers. And, and again, shout out to all the, the new viewers. I got a few more from Finland, guys. We're in 50 countries. I'm, I'm happy to say that to you on camera. The show is called Let's Chew the Gum because 
one day as I was driving to work to, to uh, deliver a lecture at the university, I had been chewing gum like I, like I tend to do. Um, as, as I've said before, I love to chew gum because it gives me a sense of rhythm. It helps me to focus in on, on my thoughts and, and uh, uh, gives me, like I said, ultimate focus, whether I'm playing sports or preparing a speech. Well, this particular day, I forgot to take the gum out of my mouth and I delivered about 45, I don't know, 30 to 45 minutes of a lecture before I noticed. And I thought, oh my goodness, I apologize. And like right now, I took the gum out of my mouth and, and apologized because you're not supposed to chew gum and talk. Well, everyone in the classroom said it wasn't a problem. They were enjoying the lecture. It was exciting. It was engaging. And so I thought, okay, well, let's chew the gum. And so that's where the idea came from. And so that's what we do, chew the gum. So it's, it's another word for, another phrase for, let's just talk. Some people say, let's chew the fat. So we're, we're talking. Um, so, th so that's it. But getting back to, to Dr. King, um, I just want to say a, a few words of appreciation um, for a man that, again, has inspired so many in multiple realms of our society, whether it's been uh, economics, uh, social movements, social injustice, um, uh, new governments, emerging governments, various clubs and groups and, and, and a variety of uh, demographics of, of individuals around the world. He, he's meant a lot and he has forever changed our society. Um, and while I'm celebrating and, and understanding his importance, um, it saddens me a bit that one of the key tenets of his existence and his purpose in the social justice movement is under threat. And again, that's the Voting Rights Act. Um, we're in a democracy, a supposed democracy, where every voice should count. And there have been quite a few people, individuals and entities, government uh, agencies and, and whatnot that have tried to and have successfully suppressed the rights of individuals to vote. Uh, whether that's been uh, situations where it's been made more difficult to vote, um, where folks have had to wait 10 hours in the line to vote. Um, and, and I know some counter arguments to that would be well it's still an opportunity however when when i just look at that one aspect of it um the idea that you have to wait 10 hours in line uh, and you you do what you have to do but for some folks that's a poll tax because if you're working and you have to take off work to do that and you lose money that's a that's a poll tax. Poll taxes were made illegal a long time ago in our nation. That was something that they would do um, after slavery to prevent African Americans from voting. Let's talk about that for a minute. So after slavery ends and African Americans are given the right to vote, um, they become the majority in several southern states, right? And so now that you get the first African American representatives in Congress, you get mayors, you get city council persons, sheriffs, etc. Um, African Americans for the first time in prominent positions of leadership. And that struck a nerve in, in the South. Um, we could go on on another topic and talk about how that influenced or is directly related to the rise of the Ku Klux Klan. That was the whole purpose of that organization was to intimidate African-Americans from voting because they had lost their white supremacy. Um, so what did they do? How did they prevent blacks from voting? Well, initially, there were things like uh, poll taxes, right? You, you had to pay uh, to vote. Obviously, most slaves didn't have the ability to pay, um, so they were eliminated. However, that affected poor whites as well. Well, they had literacy tests also. So perhaps there's a document. If you can read this document, you can vote. Uh, most blacks, as you know, were not allowed to read in slavery. So how many of them could effectively participate in the democracy if they can't pass a literacy test? But again, that affected poor whites who many of them couldn't vote as well. So a plan was devised for, uh, for a grandfather clause, what is what it's called, which stated if your grandfather voted in the last election, you could vote. So now we have a situation where obviously if you're just out of slavery and it was illegal for slaves to vote in most places, there were some places where it was possible, but for the most part, and I don't want to say for the most part, let's just put it how it is. In general, slaves could not vote 
And so if you couldn't vote, your grandfather couldn't vote, that eliminated millions of individuals who, uh, by, the law, by the law of the land, the Constitution had the right to vote. And it was pretty effective. They did other things like, you know, how many bubbles are in a bar of soap or how many pieces of bubble gum are in, in this jar. Um, uh, questions that had no obvious answer. Or sometimes they just stand around with, with shotguns and intimidate you. Well, again, those things were made illegal. Um, you were pretty much disenfranchised until the 1964 Voting Rights Act which uh, was uh, pushed through by the actions uh, in large part from Dr. King and others. But now again, that's threatened. Those rights are being threatened um, so that a certain group of individuals have more opportunity to vote. So let me go back to the idea of the poll tax. So if I'm a worker, (coughs) excuse me, if I'm a worker, again, and I have to take off work or miss work, I'm missing money. So I'm literally having to pay for votes. And as we know, many folks who are poor, and this is irrespective of race, individuals who are in poverty often don't have the type of jobs that allow them to take off work. They don't have off days. And, and even if you do have a job that allows you to take off a day, that's still a part of your overall compensation. So it's a poll tax. These things are what's being debated and, and more. Right. So what are some solutions? Um, access to early voting, access to ballot box, uh, I'm sorry, uh, drop boxes in neighborhoods, uh, mail in votes, absentee voting. All of these um, topics are being challenged and many of them have been ruled out in, in, in states. Nineteen states, I believe, have these types of laws that disallow those processes. So I would urge you, I would urge you, all of those that are under my voice now um, to take some action on that. You know, to contact your representatives, contact your members of Congress and let them know that you stand with the principle of democracy and the ability for all eligible citizens to have an equitable and accessible pathway to voting. That's what a democracy is. If if not, we don't have a democracy and and we're kidding ourselves. I like a a, a, there was a quote Dr. King made. I I believe it was that. uh, he was at UC Berkeley in 1967, May of 1967, and he talked about the goodness of some people. And he was talking particularly about white people who, uh, when he said that they chose the principle of democracy over privilege, principle over privilege. So no matter if you're privileged or more privileged than others, you know, please use that privilege to enhance our principle of democracy. And um, I didn't intend to to make this show all about that, but that's what's happening. That's the reality. Those are the issues that we're facing. And if you don't think it it affects you, um, you're sadly mistaken. So do what you can. Get the word out to your senators. Educate yourselves. Don't listen to the rhetoric. Um, It's been shown time and time again that these claims of voter fraud based upon absentee voting and and mail-in ballots and whatnot has been proven over and over again that those things were not close to having a significant impact on any of the um, elections. So let's not listen to the rhetoric. Let's educate ourselves. All right. New phase. That's what Dr. King would say. This is a new phase of equal justice. Let's champion that. Dr. King, you know, was more about than just, <clears throat> excuse me, voting rights, um, which was very important. Dr. King was also about um, to the disbelief of many people and the the um, the idea that all people were valuable. He championed the rights of all people, particularly with his uh, war on poverty, right? His campaign on poverty. And he talked about poor whites in the Appalachians. He talked about Mexican-Americans and Puerto Ricans and Americans and all people around the world who suffer from poverty. He understood that a lot of what plagues a lot of us and our nation and threatens our democracy and is probably still a threat to national security is poverty. Because with poverty, you have not only a lack of economic opportunity, But with that, you tend to attend the poorest schools, the most underfunded schools, the schools where the access to uh, useful information is not readily accessible. Um, With poverty, there's hunger, there's malnutrition. And so he began his uh, war on poverty 
um, his poor people's campaign, as he called it, um, just prior to his assassination, where he understood that true power came from the people. And I'm sure he understood that before with it being a democracy. But, you know, he started at home. Charity begins in the home. He was black, so he spoke up for black people. But he realized the true power within all people. And um, that's just something else I want you to, to keep in mind also, this idea of voting. Who is voting? What policies, practices, and, and programs are they implementing based upon that vote? All right. So we can add the fourth P. Poverty program practices and programs that they're, they're all connected, right? So let's let's make sure we do our due diligence to eradicate that All right speaking of eradication Oh my goodness, you know, I, I like to have uplifting uh, uh, Shows at, at times, but sometimes we have to just talk about the issues and another issue that's um, near and dear and and unfortunate is for me personally, wherever you are, you, you, I hope you check it out. But there's been a, a surge in, in gun violence. Um, a colleague of mine um, recently, uh, just days ago, her son was gunned down in a parking lot, senseless. And um, I'm, I'm not going to go into detail because the investigation is ongoing. Um, but it just reminded me of, and, and not only that, there were several incidents of gun violence that have been, that have been happening. Uh, one person said, you know, since uh, the ending of the stimulus, COVID stimulus payments, that maybe that's there's a correlation. People are desperate or, or upset. I, I don't I don't know. One thing I do know is, is that all lives are precious. And when you have individuals senselessly taking lives away um, because of some bravado, because of road rage, because of anger, because. A, of a lack of, of appreciation for life it, it's sad and it's an indication that we are failing uh, our young people um, we're failing to educate them on the value of life we're failing to provide alternative modes of, of engagement for them um, I recall growing up uh, in Detroit and, and then South Central Los Angeles and just sad affairs where you know, all of a sudden you, you go to school and, and your friend or someone close to you was not coming back because of senseless gun violence. And, and, and it became commonplace um, so much so that I became personally desensitized to it. And, and, and that's a sad affair. Um, I, I, I wanted to take that moment to acknowledge that, to acknowledge the, the lives lost from this. Um, and to ask and to plead for individuals everywhere, become involved in your community, become involved in the lives of your children. And if they're not your children, those in your neighborhood, right? Um, I'm going to talk a minute about some ideas I have to help. We, we all can do our part. I don't think my idea is a panacea for this issue. But if we're all doing a small part, we're that much closer to eradicating senseless violence. Um, I'll tell you a story. I'll tell you a story. Um, <clears throat> when I was in high school, when I first started out in high school, <clears throat> excuse me one second. <clears throat> when I first started out in high school, um, keep in mind, <clears throat> wow, keep in mind, I was an honor student, man. I, I think in the third grade, I read at a 12th grade level and all this type of stuff. I'm in fourth grade, I'm doing, taking algebra classes, this this type of, of, of uh, kid, very smart. When I got to high school, first year, I ended up with five Fs, five Fs the first semester of high school um, because I didn't go to class. I, I ditched class. I'll be honest, I ditched class. And I liked it initially. Um, then I realized that I was throwing my life away and I wanted to <laughs> go back to school. But I was so embarrassed uh, because when I got to class, I didn't know what the material was. Um, but I was a good kid. Good kid. I want folks to know that bad grades are not indicative of bad kids. Fast forward, I um, moved to Los Angeles, South Central Los Angeles don't know anyone uh 
So I'm able to really focus in on, on schools and my work did great. At the end of my junior year, I ended up being homeless. Um, so the start of senior year, I was homeless. I ended up finding a, a job. <laughs> what do you call it? A, a place of ill repute. Is that what it's called? A nightclub? I was very young, but I looked old enough. I'm homeless. So I, I had this job. And with this job, um, I would get off work at well, work ended at two in the morning. But because of my job duties, I probably didn't get off until three, three thirty, sometimes closer to four. And then I'd go to school at eight o'clock and get off of uh, from school at three thirty or three o'clock. Football practice from three thirty to five thirty. Work from six to two or three in the morning. Back to school at eight. Football practice at three thirty. Off at five thirty. You you see where I'm going with this? A cycle, and, and it wasn't sustainable. The point of this story, though, is I began to I was falling asleep in my first period class every day. Every day I was just exhausted exhausted um and so i started to fail it was it was a physics physics class and i recall the story of the narrative about me was that i was just a lazy young black inner city kid and that was far from the truth now no one knew i was homeless and and, I, and as a teenager i don't know if i had to disclose that information or maybe you know as an adult now i think maybe had i told someone it may have going better but the fact remains no one should be assuming about kids definitely the narrative shouldn't be another lazy young inner city black kid who doesn't care because obviously i cared right i'm there every day i'm, I'm sleeping <laughs> you know i'm asleep but i'm there after working until four in the morning every day right and, and a lot of people gave up on me um, because of that and then there was that one that one person who um, and, I, and, and I can recall it talking to with my football coach because I had to make a decision right I couldn't keep falling asleep right I had to resolve that issue and I remember talking to my football coach shout out to coach Garrett Crenshaw High School man great guy he's still there but I re remember talking to him and letting him know my situation and, and sort of why things were changing and he understood and he treated me like a young man um, he brought me in front of the entire football team and, and sort of made an example of me as a responsible young man, gave me his blessings because he knew I couldn't stop working. I had to eat. And uh, that was the end of me uh, and my pursuit to, you know, continue playing high school football. Point being, you know, don't give up on kids. Now, you know, in, uh, I have, I don't know, five or six college degrees and I've graduated with honors and in, in all those degrees. The point is. Whether you're a teacher, a principal, a parent, a community member, any type of educational stakeholder, a, a lawmaker, whatever it may be, don't give up on our most precious resources, right? Ask the question as adults. Ask the question about students. Just because the last student was some thing you didn't like doesn't mean it's the next one so we have to exercise that that type of patience and you know i would say grown-up insight to know that no matter what these are still our children they're still children they're still children and i'm, I'm re-emphasizing that because it's that important and it's our duty to raise them right so with that being said i wanted to uh take this time to invite you to replicate what I'm about to tell you. So for me, I have a nonprofit. The nonprofit is called SCORE. It stands for Securing Communities of Racial Equity. Securing Communities of Racial Equity. It's all about education and opportunity and a change, like Dr. King talked about, a new phase. And a part of what we're doing right now is offering an incentive and engagement grant that's gonna go on for the month of February and this program is targeting students who are failing or are in danger of failing. I, I said it. This, these are grants for students that are failing or in danger of failing. You heard the story I just told you, right? The idea here is deservedly so. Most scholarships and grants are awarded to students that have 4.0 or 
something in that range. Students that are well on their way to, to college if that's what they choose, but they're academically successful. I've seen the students when those announcements are made who are, don't meet those criteria that kind of, you know, shudder away and, and kind of go within themselves, right? They have the capabilities often. And as I said before, bad grades are not an indication of bad behavior, right? There could be a myriad of reasons why a student has bad grades. Could have been me, homeless, working late at night, et cetera, et cetera, right? But still able to contribute. So with this scholarship or this grant, if you have a 1.5 GPA or failing grades, we want to support you and incentivize you to not fail and to improve in your grades. So in my area, again, I want to call on folks out there listening to replicate this. It would be my beyond my wildest dreams if right now, as you're listening, this program was Implement it everywhere, and, and I don't care if you if you do it, and you can give whoever you want credit. But the idea here is students can simply answer a question because it's about Dr. King's legacy, because we're at the dawn of Black History Month. The question is, how can teaching and or learning about Black history improve the lives of all people? It's a simple question. This. Uh, scholarship and grant is not based upon race or ethnicity. Anyone can learn it. Anyone can 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 uh, become involved in it. And you can answer that question in a variety of ways. One thing I do in my class when we take tests or there's an assignment, it's not always essay writing. That's not the way that everyone expresses themselves. There are multiple literacies that are out there that are effective means of communication, especially in our advanced technological uh, age. So. You can write an essay to answer the question, but you can also create a original song, original poem. You can start a book club, a social media campaign, hashtag campaign, uh, movie production, stage play, performance, uh, presentation. Um, it's open and uh, to a variety to a variety of opportunities for students based upon their own lived individual lives, their own authentic voices, right? And so the way it's going to work, the way it's working is those that, and I don't want to say win because it's not about winning and losing, but those that are chosen based upon their, their uh, submissions will get half of the uh, grant awarded to them at the end of the, the program. I'm sorry, at the end of the month of February. So first week of March, actually. And then the other half is a contingency grant. You get the other half at the end of the school year if you can demonstrate that you no longer have any failing grades, right, and you are above a 1.5 GPA. And, and more than likely, uh, I would say this, not more than likely, I hope that all of you who are in positions to be able to institute a program like this can see the value in it. Someone asked me when I told them about it, they said, why are you awarding mediocrity? Why are you awarding failure? And I quickly said, no, my friend, that's that's exactly the opposite. I'm incentivizing excellence. I want to incentivize them. Right. Um, it could be that someone is failing because they're not trying it. And so they, they thought that, well, won't people just fail just to be able to be eligible for this? So a part of that is this, the failing grades, the 1.5 GPA will be based upon your grades at the end of the last semester. So right before winter break, that second quarter is based on that. Don't go trying to fail today so you can be eligible tomorrow. That's not what we want, right? My hope is all of you um, students, if you know, I do have quite a few uh, people in, in the high school age that are that watch the, the watch the podcast, but listen to it. Um, if you are incentivized by this, if you are motivated to do the work, SCORE wants to support you. So again, I'm going to ask all of the adult listeners and those in positions to do so. Help us to support this program. If you want more information, you can email SCORE.501C3 at gmail.com. 
or email me at the at the podcast website let's chew the gum at gmail.com i want to just say for a minute that i always appreciate the emails i receive guys i receive emails from listeners all around the world across the country and it's great um so continue to do that i hope this video format is able to reach you in a place and in a mind space where you can consume this useful information, where you can do your due diligence to not only help with the Voting Rights Act that is being um, debated in the Houses of Congress right now, um, to honor Dr. King in the way that is uh, applicable to your lifestyle, whether it's just supporting your neighbor or being kind to someone, starting programs, you know, reimagining um, the our community. Shout out to my rock group. Um, and also helping us to curtail gun violence. I'm going to do my small part every day that I can. This uh, scholarship grant program for SCORE is just one way to get that started. All right. I hope you have enjoyed today's program and the information that I put out. Again, this is Let's Chew the Gum, the podcast where we talk about everything from A to Z. Again, feel free to email us at let's chew the gum at gmail.com. You can catch the audio portion of this uh, podcast where you've always captured it on Spotify and Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spreaker, Podbean, iTunes, iHeartRadio, or wherever fine, ca- uh, fine podcasts are downloaded. Thank you so much. And remember, we always have something for your...